We were here at the Broadband Forum today at the Calix Connections Conference. Lots and lots of topics. Lincoln, you moderated the last panel. You're with the University of New Hampshire Interoperability Lab. What stood out for you as uh, something new? Well, I mean, we're still very much in the, the definition of, you know, kind of the gigabit connected society. And so that was obviously a clear focus of a lot of the, uh, the event today. Throughout the day, we saw a lot of talks towards next generation ponds. What does that mean? What does that mean architecturally as well as how does that relate to some of the new stuff that's coming around? So we've got 5G. How, how is that going to push demands onto the network? How are connected homes going to push demands onto the network? And then the, the final session that uh, I actually moderated working on, what, what does that managed Wi-Fi? solution look like in in the home and, and some of the technologies that are being worked on there like USP coming out of the broadband form or the open broadband uh, map project with the multi AP so and those are pretty new initiatives aren't they at least they they were new to me if you could talk to them for a moment that'd be great Sure. So the, the USP is a brand new specification that's come out of the broadband forum uh, focused on management and control of devices inside the, the home network. So it's really kind of the natural evolution of what was TR69. And, and you know, at last week at Broadband World Forum, we announced that we are, we're, broadband worldwide is really hitting uh, 1 billion connected devices with TR69 weighing heavily in on that. If you think about where that's going with IoT and stuff like that, we, we really needed to do a refresh on that and actually kind of bring that up to date with the modern world. So that's that's exactly what USP is dealing with. It's got a couple of kind of key integrated things in terms of better security, better control, uh, smaller uh, weight on the protocol itself, but it also leverages all the experience and know-how out of TR69. So the data models and the device models are all, all still right there and can be integrated. And then the second part of that is, is the open broadband map project, which is one of the broadband forums, open source projects and initiatives to really provide an implementation of the, the easy mess specification from the Wi-Fi Alliance and, and really kind of bring that towards a, a, a reference of a carrier grade implementation. And the idea there is it's technology neutral, whether it's a wire or wireless, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're, we everybody wants that best of class service in the home and stuff like that. And, and from the, a lot of the end users perspective, we've talked about this a lot in the forum. If, if the Wi-Fi is not working, the broadband's not working. And then the service provider gets very, you know, inundated with the, the support calls. And, and they've got to be able to touch and reach out to that, that subscriber residence or that business and actually fix the problem. And so that's where all of the, the management and control protocols really come into, into play. Now, it's open source. So how does that, and you can really talk to this from your standpoint of being a lab, but from a standard standpoint, how does that play into the traditional standards approach that we used to have to save 20 years ago? Right. So this is a change that we've seen all across the industry, right? Like we broad, not just in broadband, but in general, open source seems to be the thing that everybody is saying. And there, there's been a lot of talk out there of like, well, broadband or, or sorry, open source replaces uh, standards. And in a lot of places, I think that that's not necessarily true. I think that you need both of those things working together. And I think that's one of the strengths that we've actually done in the broadband forum, where we have a number of open source projects and there's a number of places where those open source projects have actually created something like an augmentation to a data model or some new bit that actually then gets folded exactly back into the standards. They, they kind of bring that into the forum as a contribution directly and then that, that bit gets standardized, right? So it gets, it gets put into an interface definition, a data model definition. In a lot of cases, the experts in the forum that know that bit of it really, really well actually then feed information right back to that open source project and then that enables that project to then kind of move to its next logical step and something like that. And so it's a very, very tight relationship. But again, that open source reference implementation, that open source implementation gives kind of a, a, a kickstart to the industry to be able to actually build or use something real today based on some of those specifications or what the problem is that they're trying to be solved. Well, and if we step back to kind of the access part of it, I know 5G, there's been some criticism that some of the stuff that's going in the market today isn't quote unquote standards, but it is seem it is fitting a market need, it sounds like, right? Right. And so you're always going to see when you get on the bleeding edge, probably that some things are, are going to run ahead of the specification. But if you think about it, what that can mean in the long run, um, that is something that could be dangerous in terms of supporting kind of future proofness or integration issues uh, or really just kind of interoperability and such. And so we're, we try to where we can with like the open broadband projects to kind of get 
in front of some of these new things and new aspects like the easy mesh and the uh, USP and, and just really have implementations out there right from the, the day zero to, to really kind of support the whole industry. And it sounds like abstracting some of the things that would have been in hardware and bringing them to software is changing things too, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Broadband Forms Cloud CO project, and we heard a little bit about the, the other open source project, which was the BAA, and abstracting away that access network and kind of facilitating a way to actually do migration and stuff like that is, is really central to a lot of what's happening on, on that aspect. And it's really kind of supporting that move towards some of these new technologies like NFV, um, SDN and such, and just kind of bringing that to a, a kind of an architectural framework that then can be used by service providers around the world to actually move to a data centric like uh, central office and kind of leverage some of that that hyperscale or the compute resources that are out there now. Why don't you talk a little bit about your lab and what you do and how this virtualization has changed the way you do things. One of the things that we've definitely seen is, is a pickup of obviously working directly with the open source projects and you know I've had the opportunity to work a lot as the lab with like the Linux Foundation on, on projects. And so we see kind of that close integration of, of working with that and following what's going on in the open source community and not just following necessarily what's going on in the standards community with the broadband forum or the ITU or the IEEE. So it's it's really kind of having to be one more thing that we're tracking, but it also creates that, that kind of interesting case for us because unlike a standard where you then might have to go to a vendor and get an implementation and, and bring that into the lab, there, you know, an open source solution tends to be something you can kind of download and play with like right then in your lab. And so certainly with some of the broadband forum projects and, and like BAA where we've been participating in that project as well, we, we've been able right from the, the kind of first incarnation of the source code being able to like pull that into the lab, get it up and running and play with it. And then again, as a lab, provide feedback directly into that project of, hey, here's some bugs that we found, or, or here's an improvement that we're, we would suggest and stuff like that. And actually being able to contribute right into the, the project directly. I, I would imagine it, uh, you're acting kind of this, this bridge between the open source communities and the standards. Certainly, yeah, definitely trying to, to bridge that gap and get everybody kind of on the same page and then also wanting to make sure that, you know, the vendors still play an important, important part of this. So, you know, they're going to be providing solutions and, and real hardware and stuff like that into the broadband uh, networks. And we just need to make sure that, like, we're, we're able to kind of get the best of all of the world's solutions in there and, and not necessarily say, well, this is an open source only deployment versus this is a closed source only deployment. I think it's going to be a big mix uh, of all of those things to really do what is being promised with these next generation services. Well, excellent. And events like this definitely probably help that conversation. Right? Oh, yeah. This, events like this are great. And it, it really just kind of brings everybody's perspective from the vendor community as well as service providers and, and gives them a chance to kind of talk about what they've done over the past quarter or past six months uh, on those kind of new and exciting technologies. Well, Lincoln, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.